Honda Civic is a bit of an icon. Over the last half century, it's been the fourth best-selling car in America. Some generations have been less successful than others, but like the VW Golf, it's morphed over the years from Econobox to Hot Hatch. The styling has ranged from Jelly Bean to Sedate Sedan, and with the domestic manufacturers having given up on cars, Honda has a lot riding on this 11th generation. For 2022, Honda has delivered a massive change. This is a completely new vehicle from the front bumper to the rear, with a couple of exceptions that we will talk about in a minute, but spoiler alert, the interior is amazing. It's sort of like getting that supermodel girlfriend on a beer budget. How does that work? There are four different trim levels available, starting with the LX. This is the Sport, so this is the second one up, and the Sport and the LX get a two liter naturally aspirated engine, both carryovers from last year. Makes 158 horsepower, 138 pound feet of torque. Now you're moving up to the EX and the Touring. Now you're gonna get a 1.5 liter turbo engine. It makes 180 horsepower. So in terms of pricing, I've got it up on screen, but the LX starts at a little under $23,000, all the way up to the Touring, which is a little over $29,000. Sport comes with black 18 inch glossy wheels, and this paint is an extra cost option. It's called Platinum Pearl White, and it's got a nice little bit of pearlescent, sort of sparkly finish to it. Now, one of the first things I notice in here is that the cabin is bright and airy. The sight lines are excellent. There's really no big blind spots at all here because we've got a lot of window glass and the belt line is kind of low. So very easy to see out of. And all the controls fall naturally exactly to where I want them to be. The radio is very easy to reach. I can reach the shifter. There's nothing that I'm stretching for, especially the infotainment system and the climate control. The cabin is actually pretty quiet. Now, I'm not going very fast right now. I'm going at city speeds, but even on the highway, it's not noisy at all. And the ride quality is a good compromise between something kind of sporty and something kind of luxury. It's sort of right in between. So you definitely feel imperfections in the road. There's no question if there are little bumps, little potholes and things like that, they're definitely gonna be transmitted through to the cabin. You're gonna feel them, but it's not harsh. It's not intrusive, but you know that they're there. This is not a luxury car by any means. I've done most of my testing in an urban setting. I've been driving around in the city going mostly sort of commuter type speeds because I think that's what a lot of people are gonna be using this car for is commuting. But I've been driving it around 30 to 50 miles an hour sort of on average just to sort of get a feel of what it's like. So the gas mileage. Now this is the two liter engine. And the two liter engine, which is naturally aspirated, comes only in the LX and the Sport. It makes 158 horsepower and 138 pound-feet of torque at 4,200 RPM, if I recall correctly. So it's not a particularly powerful engine. Let's mash it here. So that's what it sounds like at full throttle. And it's not particularly fast, but it's probably going to be I would say adequate for most people if you've just got two people in here. If you're driving around with four people all the time, it's probably gonna feel a little underpowered. Honda says they have refined the power delivery. And here's the thing, this engine, this two liter engine, and also the 1.5 turbo that you can get in the upper models are carryovers from the last generation, from 2021 and prior to that. Now the two liter, rather the 1.5 liter makes 180 horsepower, so it's a little bit more powerful than this. So gas mileage, now I've been doing a lot of full throttle driving, I've been mashing it everywhere, I've been driving basically like a monkey, and I'm getting about 21, 22 miles per gallon indicated, which is not very good, but I don't think that's gonna be representative of your average driver. Uh, it's rated for, I believe, about 30 in the city and 33 combined. So take that as you will, it's not my experience, but I don't think I'm driving it like a typical person would because I'm having a little bit of fun with this car. The highlight of the car is definitely the cabin. This is an all new clean sheet, fresh design, 
And what is really nice about this is it's so simple and elegant and clean looking. I think they've been taking notes from older Audis, like the A3 it reminds me a little bit of that. But what we have here, which is unique and distinct, and I haven't seen any other manufacturer doing this, is this honeycomb element that goes all the way across the dash from door to door. And it's very clever. It hides the controls for your heater and ventilation and air conditioning system. The center display is actually all LED for the first time and it is really good. One thing I noticed is the black levels are very, very high, so there's a lot of contrast. It's very simple, very easy to read. On the LX, the Sport, and the EX, you get this seven inch display with Apple CarPlay standard. It's wired also Android Auto is standard too. If you go up to the Touring model, you get a 10.2 inch screen and then you get wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is nice. You've got this row of physical buttons down here, which frankly is super nice because you can touch them and they respond. They, they, they feel good. There's none of this haptic nonsense that other manufacturers have. Now, instead of piano black glossy plastic in the center console, you got this very nice material which has sort of a hound's tooth type texture on it. Looks like a bunch of little arrows. You can, you can hear what it sounds like, but more importantly, it doesn't collect scratches. You're not going to notice fingerprints so much. Honda has definitely not forgotten about practicality. One of the hallmarks of the Civic in recent years has been the massive amount of storage space that you get in the trunk. And this has a very big trunk as well. It has been slightly smaller. Smaller, is that a word? It's slightly smaller than it was before. It's now 0.2 cubic feet less. It's 14.8. if I want to. I don't know if that's a good idea. And I was able to fit about uh, six or eight bankers boxes in here without any issue at all. Now, one thing with the lower trim levels that you get with the Sport is you don't get the 60-40 folding rear seat like you do in the upper trim level. So if that's important to you, you gotta move up a little bit. Compared to the previous generation, the wheelbase is now 1.4 inches longer and now it's up to 107.7 and that means you get a little bit more space back here than you had before. I've got a ton of headroom and there's a ton of knee room back here too. I'm five foot nine, tons of space in front of my knees. Even if I were six foot tall, this would be pretty comfortable. And the cabin is actually a little bit bigger than it was in the past too. It's now 99 cubic feet. And because the wheelbase is longer, they've stretched out the car and they've added that extra space into the cabin. As we move into the 2020s, Honda is not alone in having a suite of products that are for safety and convenience sort of driver automation products. Honda calls these Honda Sensing. And there's a couple of different features that I'm gonna to try to demonstrate. One is an automated cruise control. It's basically a radar cruise control where you can follow the car ahead of you. It's gonna to try to keep pace. Apparently it'll let you go all the way down to zero so it works in a traffic jam so you don't have to work as hard. You set the cruise control the radar cruise and it will follow the car ahead of you, keep a constant distance all the way down to nothing. And the other thing is it has a lane keeping assist feature where when it sees both lanes on the road, it's going to steer for you. Now you do need to keep your hands on the wheel. It's not perfect, but we're gonna try them out. We're in some, we're about to enter some rush hour morning traffic here in a slightly rainy day. Let's see if I can get them to work and show you how well they work got the system engaged. I've set it to the speed limit and I'm letting the lane keeping assist do the steering for me. I've got my hands lightly on the wheel. Let's see how well it does. All right, around a tighter bend, I definitely need to give it a little bit of help. Let's try it again here. Yeah, you definitely need to give it a little bit of a help around the tighter bends, but it does try to keep you centered more or less in the lane. So I'm coming up on a vehicle here ahead of me. I'm gonna change lanes. It is raining quite a bit now. And let's see, it does see the vehicle ahead of me. And it is slowing down to his pace. It's this white Chevy truck. It's slowed down and works pretty well. Now, one thing I like is it doesn't apply the brakes very aggressively. Like some systems I've been in, it seems to apply them fairly naturally, which is a good thing. And you can also adjust the distance that you're gonna keep between 
the vehicle ahead of you and your vehicle by using a little button on the steering wheel, which is seems to be sort of like the standard nowadays. I think all the manufacturers are doing it and it's working pretty well here. It is a little bit conservative. It is Honda after all. So, okay, let's see if we go down to a complete stop here. I think we will. And it's gonna creep up a little bit on the vehicle. Let's see if it goes to a complete stop. And yes, there we have it. That was a very nice controlled stop, kind of like a chauffeur would do really gentle it just sort of crept up on the car and now to get moving i need to tap the gas and it should start to follow again so there are a lot of manufacturers that are doing systems like this now and i would say that this honda works certainly as well as the other manufacturers this is a big improvement over the previous generation which i wasn't such a big fan of this works a lot more seamlessly now and especially the way it brings you to a complete stop this should be a little easier in traffic for you, but again, you've got to pay attention to the road. You can't just let the car do the driving for you because that's not what it's doing. Steering feel is excellent in this vehicle. It's definitely one of the best in the class, if not the best in the class by, I would say, a good margin. It's an electric system, of course, but in the Honda Type R, the current generation, or rather the, the 21 model, the steering feel is one of the best out there, I think. They've done a lot of work to improve the amount of feedback that you get into the system so it doesn't feel numb. You can really feel what's going on with the road. This is a little bit light for my taste, but this is not a sports car. I think most people are going to find it particularly just weighted just right. Now, Honda says they have improved the transmission a little bit. It's also a carryover, but they've improved the tuning and they've probably changed some other things with it as well. So it is a CVT, which means a continuously variable transmission. That means there are no gears in here. It's got a, a pulley system essentially, so it can continuously vary the ratio up and down as it needs to be for either best fuel economy or if you're driving hard like I am, it's going to give you the best acceleration. So it's not the enthusiast choice, let's just put it that way. But in terms of CVT transmissions, there are some that are okay, there's some that are better, and there's some that are pretty great. This is a very good CVT transmission in my opinion. This feels a lot like a traditional automatic transmission. You don't get too much of that rubber band effect. Now I accelerated full throttle there for a second so the engine was screaming but you don't get that rubber band effect where it seems like the the engine is somehow disconnected from the speed that you're going. Not really the case in this. Some manufacturers like Toyota have got a physical first gear which sort of helps mitigate that effect but Honda doesn't have that and frankly they don't need it. This is a pretty good transmission. Now in terms of pricing, we do have these four different levels. We have LX, Sport, EX, and Touring. And this is sort of on the lower end because we've got the two liter engine. Now for my money, so this is about 24,500 roughly. Uh, this has got some uh, dealer installed options on it, but let's just call this 20, 24 something. If you go up to the EX, which is the next level up, now you're getting a lot more for your money. Now you're getting the 1.5 liter engine, you're getting a slightly differently tuned transmission. You're getting, I think you're getting a sunroof. You're getting, you're getting a lot more features basically for your money. So I think that's sort of, in my opinion, that's kind of the sweet spot. I would probably go for the EX uh, because I've driven the uh, the 1.5 liter engine and the engine is a lot nicer in my opinion. It's got a lot more power and that's the main thing. When you get up to touring, you're into leather and you've got a lot of comfort and convenience features, but you're also going up a lot in price. So in my opinion, EX is probably the sweet spot. That's probably where I would spend my money if I were going to buy this car. And if I were looking for a commuter car, in this price range, this would definitely be on my list, no question. This is a this is a superb vehicle. This is so well thought out. It's just a whole integrated package. Everything feels about right. This feels like it's going to go a long time. This feels like it's not going to break. 
this is like a very typical Honda product, but this is clearly the best Civic that they have ever made by, I think, a wide margin. This is a super crowded space. The competitors we're talking about would be the Toyota Corolla, the Mazda 3, the Hyundai Elantra. Those are the ones that come to mind. And I think this is probably the best of all of them, to be quite honest with you. Everything about this car is so well put together. There's so much care. There's so much attention to detail. There's so much thoughtfulness into the design and the ergonomics of this car. If you're in the market for a car in this price class, this should be at the top of your list. You should definitely be checking this out. This is one of my favorite cars at this price point that I've driven in a long time. My name is Eric. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching.